All right, so today we're going to take on looking at the aggregate expenditures model, and that's featured in Chapter 28 of your textbook. So just some assumptions to kind of get things rolling. The first is that prices are actually fixed within the economy, especially in the short run. And one of the individuals that made this claim was a guy named John Maynard Keynes. You can see a picture of him right down here. And John Maynard Keynes was a British economist um, and who basically developed a school of thought that runs counter to Adam Smith's classicalists. And one of the things that he noticed during the Great Depression was that um, as demand dropped, uh, prices didn't really change in the economy. And so he set about creating a model that would help us in understanding why that was. And so that's what the aggregate expenditures model uh, is, all right? And basically what it helped him do was convince uh, the government that intervention in some cases in the economy was necessary. You, if you remember, classicalists are completely free market. Governments stay the heck out of the way. But uh, Keynesians uh, believe that the government plays an important role in um, helping the economy uh, achieve desirable outcomes. So when we first look at the aggregate expenditure model, we'd like to simplify it a little bit. And so to do that, we're going to be looking at a private closed economy. And so if you look at our formula up here of the expenditure approach, we have our consumers, we have our investment, we have our government, and we have our net exports. And if we're going to look at a private closed economy, there's a couple of portions of the formula that have to have to go. And if you consider that, um, the ones, if we're looking at a cons uh, private closed economy that need to, need to get out of the formula are going to be um, our net exports and also uh, our government spending. So what that leaves us with is consumption and gross investment. And so what we're looking at down here is something that we call an investment schedule. And on the investment schedule, some things that uh, you might want to look at um, is first off our, our output. All right. Um, notice that our real output and income are put into the same column. And the reason for that is because uh, any outcome, any output, excuse me, is going to be equal to income uh, for those individuals that are producing it. Um, and then on the other side, we have our investment, our gross investment by private individuals and by corporations in the economy. And you can see the various combinations of that. You know, our level of output and income, are obviously in this economy, increasing as we work our way down. Uh, level of investment stays relatively the same. Now, looking at this from a graphical standpoint, um, you can notice again, we have our 45 degree line. And at our 45 degree line, our aggregate expenditures, our total expenditures in the economy, our consumption plus gross investment, is exactly equal to our real domestic product or our GDP. So another way of looking at that is basically at this 45 degree line, um, at any point on this 45 degree line, everything that's being produced in the economy is being consumed. And so you'll notice that in this economy, as we work our way up, we'll see that the equilibrium um, is at 470 billion. So at 470 billion, we have that as our GDP, that's our production of goods and services, and we also have our aggregate expenditures uh, being at 470 billion. So again, everything that's being produced in the economy is being consumed. Now notice on this graph that if we uh, take out gross investment, what ends up happening is our consumption is only at 450 billion. And so without gross investment of 20 billion, this economy is in what we call disequilibrium. And this is a situation basically where consumption isn't high enough to accommodate all of our, um, our aggregate expenditures. And, uh, and so basically, uh, like I said, the economy is, uh, is in disequilibrium. And, uh, and in this case, with consumption being lower um, than our, our, our GDP, we would end up having a surplus. And if you have a surplus in the economy, what can happen is uh, businesses can start slowing production. And if nothing is done to correct for this, uh, you can have uh, increased unemployment. Uh, so again, uh, at this place in time, without gross investment involved, if we're just looking at consumption, 
consumption isn't sufficient enough to basically uh, take out all of the new GDP that's being produced in the economy at this point. And so that $20 billion gap has been filled by, by gross investment, which is what gets the economy to the equilibrium point of $470 billion. So some things that we'll see with equilibrium GDP, uh, real domestic output um, is going to be basically be a, a place where um, firms can remain profitable um, in using the land, the labor, and the capital, the factors of production. Um, and so that's something that we'll see. Uh, some other things that we'll see with aggregate expenditures uh, is basically, you know, our consumption and our gross investment is equal to our equilibrium GDP on the graph. Um, and again, I said this before, but when you're at equilibrium, all output GDP is being consumed. So aggregate expenditures are equal to um, our equilibrium GDP. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is, again, dis disequilibrium is not sustainable. Um, if you have a situation where GDP is less than um, our equilibrium, and, and less than our aggregate, aggregate expenditures, um, our spending is going to be above um, our, our GDP production, and that's going to ultimately end up leading to inflation in the economy. There'll be ch too much money chasing too few goods. Um, on the flip side of that, if our GDP is greater than, than equilibrium, so GDP exceeds our aggregate expenditures, um, production is going to exceed consumption, and we'll end up having a surplus in the economy, which can ultimately lead to uh, unemployment. Some other features of equilibrium GDP, uh, savings and planned investment are exactly equal. Uh, savings are considered to be leakage from the economy. That's money that you know could have been consumed and spent somewhere, but it's not being spent. It's being held off on the side. So we consider that to be leakage or, uh, as it says on the slide, withdrawal from the economy. Um, but investment is an injection. And uh, at equilibrium, savings and investment uh, need to be equal. Um, and then the last piece of this is that at equilibrium, um, there are no unplanned changes in inventories. Um, I told you guys in the last chapter, um, in, in investment uh, is one of the, the least stable pieces of the formula, the expenditure approach formula. Um, but when you look at inventory specifically, uh, those, can, those can fluctuate as well, but not at equilibrium GDP. Um, there aren't any surprises. Um, there aren't any surpluses. There aren't any sudden shortages. Um, inventory is right where it needs to be. And uh, we don't have any situations where businesses have to either rev up production um, or cut it. And, and, and ultimately, conversely, um, we, we have um, a, a situation where we're at full employment, which, which means that we don't, uh, we don't have any cyclical unemployment that we're experiencing in the economy at the time.